Visual learning and mind mapping was created for Transliteracy Conference 2010, June 11th and 12th in Owen Sound, Ontario, by staff at Adult Learning Centres, Grapers, Georgian. This presentation was created and originally presented by Caitlin Mesley and Roger Hannon of the Collingwood Adult Learning Centre. This workshop explores visual learning, mind mapping, immersive learning and PowerPoint and how to use them in your LBS or adult learning programming. Knowledge, not capital, is the new source of wealth. In a June 2008 article on usability expert Jacob Nielsen's theory, Slate columnist Michael Agar notes, Humans are informivores. On the internet, we hunt for facts. In earlier days, when switching between sites was time-consuming, we tended to stay in one place and dig. Now, we assess a site quickly, looking for an information scent. We move on if there doesn't seem to be any food around. A new creativity age is dawning. And together, we, adult learners and educators, can be participants rather than spectators. There are many, many tools out there to use. Sometimes it can be overwhelming. But by taking the time to narrow down what works and what doesn't, you'll be left with many valuable tools you can learn to apply in your day-to-day -day activities. From drawings on rocks and caves in prehistoric times, through to the introduction of the printing press in the 1400s, and finally to today with the ever-present computer, Blackberries and iPhones, the history of visual communication is fascinating and richly textured. Visual learning involves creativity, thinking skills, and continuous learning. You're already doing more than you think. Alvin Toffler, an American writer and futurist, suggests that the non literate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Taking something you know and understand, deconstructing it, and putting it back together using visuals which you will see as we carry on through this presentation, allows a new perspective into the material. Essential skills play a big part in visual learning. Toffler also says that in learning, pictures beat text. Why, you ask? Because reading is inefficient. His explanation for this, if we hear a piece of information, three days later we'll remember 10% of it. Add a photo and we'll remember 65%. Visual information increases our understanding by creating and sharing knowledge. A picture will always make an impact. Tony Bazan is the world's foremost expert on thinking visually and a leading lecturer on the brain and learning. He believes we're in a global creativity crisis because of a creativity decline in the curriculum. We're actually teaching uncreativity by focusing on what is learned rather than how to learn. This decline in the creativity of the curriculum is not natural, he argues further pointing out that we are actually teaching our students to have their natural genius or skills taper off because of what the curriculum dictates. Images help us communicate with the outside world. We are more visual than we think we are. We visually process many things on a daily basis. As we travel through this presentation together, you'll begin to take notice of the things you do. Some of them may sound familiar, and these could be things you've been doing for years without realizing it. We'll show you how to turn these visual learning tendencies into online tools you and your students can use to enhance learning and retention. Studies show that of the five senses, vision is the dominant sense. We recall visual information. We are wired to notice differences and patterns. The majority of our learners are also visual. They see things better than they hear them. At the most basic level, vision affects how our brain reacts to major threats and opportunities. These are things that need to be seen in order to be understood in the best possible way. Marshall McLuhan, famous Canadian educator, philosopher, and scholar, coined the phrase, the medium is the message, meaning the message of any medium or technology is the change of scale or pace or pattern that it introduces into human affairs. Look at what the internet, the greatest invention some say since fire, has done for society, workplaces, advertising, and schools. McLuhan also weighs in with Alvin Toffler when he states that when a thing is current, it creates currency. Nothing is as current today as the Internet. Some of our staff have been trained in the Bridges Out of Poverty program through the AHA process. An important piece of this program involves the use of mental models, which play a major role in cognition, reasoning, and decision-making. Our mental models help shape our behavior and define our approach to solving problems and carrying out tasks. A mental model is a visual explanation of a person's thought process about how something works in the real world. It is a representation of the surrounding world, 
the relationships between its various parts, and a person's intuitive perception about their own acts and their consequences. Mental models should serve as an analytical tool, allowing us to clearly document users' current mental images, vocabulary, and assumptions. Tony Bazan describes a mind map as a thinking, free-flowing tool which reflects externally what goes on inside your head. Mind mapping is designed to use both sides of your brain. Colors and picture drawing are the creative side, while note-taking is the analytical side. Using both sides of your brain, you get better retention, more free-flowing ideas, and maintain concentration. Mind maps and similar concepts have been used for centuries in learning, brainstorming, visual thinking, and problem solving by educators, engineers, psychologists, and others. We all know that person who will draw a picture to explain something or emphasize a point. By organizing their thoughts on paper using a mental model, they are creating a mind map. Dan Rome is the creator of the back of the napkin, a phrase he copyrighted and has turned into fantastic visual learning tools. He believes that any problem can be solved with a picture and that anyone can draw it. This is an excellent example of a mental model turned mind map. The layout is easy to understand and it asks and answers the most important questions. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. Mind maps have a central idea or theme around which ideas, words, and concepts can be added. Pictures cement what you are trying to say and see. For example, the computer program Sight Words incorporates the word, the sound, and the picture. Wordle, Worded Out, and Bubble.us are just a few of the free online tools you can use to create visual content for your promotional or educational material. Now let's explore a few of these online tools in detail. Worded Out and Wordle are two fantastic ways of generating word clouds. They may be used to summarize an essay or in self-reflection. Please go to Visual Learning and Mind Mapping Part 2 on the Adult Learning Center's GBG YouTube channel.